Hey everyone, uh, hopefully you guys are having a good Easter vacation. I saw that a lot of you had uh, the same question about exponential and logistic growth. And I guess if you guys have a lot of the same questions, I can make a video about it and explain to everybody as opposed to everyone being so confused and angry. So Lauren brought it up and then Tara said she also had the same question and Alex brought it up also. So I'm assuming they're not the only three in the class that have difficulty figuring out what's the difference between exponential and logistic growth. So I found this website, um, has the graphs and also a cool example of what that means. So this is a graph of what it means by exponential logistic growth. Let me see if I, if I click on it, if it, um, here it's a little bit bigger. So think about a population, think about the human population. And if there's nothing impeding progress, if there's no, you know, there's nothing bothering anybody and there's no limits to resources, an exponential growth is what uh, is most likely to happen. So see this dark blue line? It's an exponential graph. I told uh, in Lauren's post, I mean, sort of like doubling. So every time maybe you have 2, then 4, then 8, then 16, then 32, exponential growth is like sort of like a multiplier, like a, a population is doubling or tripling. It looks like this. Okay. Logistic growth means um, it's going exponential. So you see it's going on along the same path as a dark blue line. Except when I get closer and closer to the carrying capacity, instead of going exponential, I sort of flatten out and I just reach that carrying capacity. This is also called, uh, called an S-curve. This one's like a really flat and widened S-curve. And this dark blue one is a J-curve. So what you want to know or notes between the two is that exponential means there's no limits. So it's a J-curve. But if there's something blocking the way or there's a capacity like borders or maybe there's not enough food, you get a, a logistic growth that peaks or stops at the carrying capacity. So the example I wanted to show you was uh, how the population growth has changed based on fossil fuels. So here's a cool picture that they, uh, they found. So here is the total urban population and fossil fuel use. So here in the green, this one on the bottom is the population growth. So you can see the population is pretty stable for the most part for the last thousand years. And the only thing that changed was the use of fossil fuels. All of a sudden, when the use of fossil fuels came about, its use became, its use, which is this red one, became exponential, which means the urban population grew exponentially, which means the world population, which is this in purple, also grew exponentially. So here's an example. Oh gosh, it doesn't reach all the way. Let me see. So this is an example. If I looked at that same curve, what's logistic and what's exponential? For the last thousand years, the world population and the urban population seem pretty flat. That's logistic. Like it sort of does, it peaked. Like it's not getting any further or it doesn't stop. This one doesn't look like an S curve, but it's a really, really flat S. But when it, there's a new technology or a new resource that can make the population grow, uh, comes into play, that's when I switch to an exponential growth. Because now more families can be born, there's more energy, there's more resources, which means more people are allowed or can live. Obviously, the next question people have is, when is this exponential growth going to go logistic again? And I'm sure many of you can guess when we run out of fossil fuels or get close to it, this exponential growth will probably flatten out. So hopefully that helps explain logistic and exponential. If you guys have any other questions like that you all have, uh, I don't mind explaining for you guys on a, on a video. So hope that helps, and I'll see you all later.